Hey there, I'm Bob from Midwest Quail Farm. And in this short video today, I'm going to help demonstrate how to answer one of the most common questions that our customers send to us. And we also see this question all the time in like Facebook groups, like Caternix Corner and things like that, which by the way, is a great place to go for a lot of information about raising Caternix Quail. Uh, but the big question that I get all the time and we see there is how to sex my birds. Almost weekly, I'll get emails from customers who we sent hatching eggs out to, uh, it's been a few weeks, they've hatched them out, the birds are starting to mature, and then they want to know how to tell what's a rooster and what's a hen. So we've got a few different ways I'm gonna show you how to do that. So the first way I'm gonna show you is how to sex three week old jumbo browns or jumbo Egyptians. I just happen to have right here in this grow out pen, this group of jumbo browns. We've got two grow outs here. We've got about 150 birds here. They're three weeks old today. So I'm gonna show you with our feather sexable mixes, which for us are the jumbo browns and the jumbo Egyptians, how to feather sex them and it's super easy. So let me show you. Okay, so. I'm gonna show you here, there's a reason why our Jumbo Browns are our most popular hatching eggs that we sell. Uh, that's, they're great birds, they're super versatile, they're always very healthy, great layers. Uh, our Jumbo Browns at maturity at 10 weeks get to be about 16 ounces, which is really big for, for any kind of Jumbo Caternix, and they're feather sexable. So at three weeks old, like I said, these birds here are just three weeks, you can tell the difference between the roosters and the hens. So let me first show you a hen. So this is a hen, look at her chest, see here, how her chest is white and speckled. At a glance, at three weeks old, that absolutely is a hen. The roosters, on the other hand, see his chest is rust colored and it doesn't have speckles on it. So here's the two together. That is hen, rooster, hen, rooster. And the jumbo Egyptians feather sex the same way. Now, I actually, a lot of times will feather sex them, our browns here at two weeks, two and a half weeks. Because what you'll see is they all, they'll all start off with kind of a speckled chest. And then at about two weeks, the roosters, that'll start to separate. You'll start to see kind of a rust line there. You'll start to see the speckles moving to the sides as their feathers grow in. But then by three weeks, it's absolutely crystal clear. Rooster, head. Okay, we're gonna move on now. If you didn't sex them in three weeks, if you just let them grow out, I have on my hand here two six week old jumbo browns. And you'll see it's even more apparent at this point. They are wanting to get back into their cages. But here at six weeks old, this is a hen. See, the spe white speckled chest. And this is a rooster with a rust colored chest. Also, you can look at their heads look a little different. The roosters get that rust color in their, um, and their heads as well. Very easy to tell apart, which is great if you're doing a breeding program and you don't want to feed a bunch of birds that you're not going to use. The, the uh, breeding ratio that we recommend is one rooster to five hens. So if you hatch out a whole bunch of birds, then you know, you're, you're, not, you're going to need one fifth less roosters than you need hens. So whether you eat them, whether you sell them, uh, whatever you're going to do with them, and in some cases, some people will just cull them, uh, there's a lot of uses for them, so make sure to look for a good use if you don't want to waste a bird and just cull it for no reason. Um, but you can tell right at three weeks which ones are your hens, which ones are your roosters. And at six weeks, it couldn't be more apparent. Okay, next up are our Jumbo Egyptians. And the Jumbo Egyptians get feather sex the exact same way. The only difference between a Jumbo Egyptian and the Jumbo Browns is they have a little more red in their, in their plumage. So they still have the same characteristics but they just look a little bit more red. They have that rouge gene bred into them. This one's trying to get away from me. Oh. Caught him. Um, and they also, in our stock, our Jumbo Wilds or Browns grow to be about 16 ounces. And our Jumbo Egyptians only grow to be about 12 ounces. Uh, they do lay very big eggs, though. They're some of our best layers. Uh, but here in the Jumbo Egyptians, there's your hen. She's still that white speckled chest, a little more red than just kind of a black or brown and white. And then the rooster has that rust colored chest, rooster, hen, rooster, hen. Those are your jumbo Egyptians. Those are the easy ones. Now I'll show you the more tricky ones and that's the whites. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is show you how to sex our whites. We have jumbo whites and giant whites. Now I'm gonna show you, those are the only non-feather sexable varieties that we have here at Midwest Quail Farm. Uh, but there are lots of jumbo quail varieties or just regular quail varieties out there that can't be feather sexed, that have to be bent sexed. So this procedure will work for any of those. So if you have birds, you don't know if they're hens or roosters, they're over six weeks old, this is the way to do it. 
Okay, this bird I'm gonna show you next, this is one of our giant whites. She's not quite six weeks old, and you'll see like these are very, very large bird. You can see compared to my big guy, size of my hand. This is 16 or 17 ounce bird, and she's just shy of six weeks old. Uh, the first thing I wanna show you is when you're feather sexing, I've seen a lot of videos out there that show you how to hold the birds to vent sex them. Excuse me, I said feather sexing. Vent sexing, the non-feather sexable varieties. Um, most of them show you how to like secure their feet and secure their wings. I don't recommend any of that. You see how calm she is right now? I don't put any pressure on the bird. You can see I'm not even squeezing with my fingers. The best way to hold these so you don't injure the bird is you slide your hand on the back like this, take your thumb and your middle finger, put them under the wing, and your index finger over the wing, and just lay them on their back. They'll flip around for a few minutes, let them flap their wings, let them calm down, but you're not putting pressure on them where they might hurt themselves. After a couple of minutes, just like this, they'll calm right down. Okay, now let me show you how to do this. This is a hen, so these are more tricky. I'm gonna show you this first, and then I'll show you the surefire way to tell if you have a rooster as opposed to a hen. So on a hen, all you gotta do, once they're calmed down, they're on their back, she's still gonna flop around a little bit. You just pull their tail down, and look at this vent right here. And you'll see, as you pull it down, she's got so much fuzz down there. But it's flat, her vent is flat and wide. It's, I know it's tricky to see in this video, but it's, it's if she's calmed down and relaxed, it's flat, it's just a line like this that goes across, that's a hen. And again, look how calm she is once you, once you get them to chill out on their back without squeezing them. It doesn't stress them out nearly as much. So that's a hen, but the easier way to vent sex whites or any kind of non-feather sexable variety is not to look for hens, it's to look for the roosters. Okay, so this, now what I have in my hand here is one of our giant whites. This is a rooster, uh, and again, he's just shy of six weeks old. That's about a 17 ounce bird right now already at six weeks old. So he's he's going to be a big boy. He'll be one of our breeders. Um, but telling, and you see I already have him tagged with a blue tag. This is how I recommend sexing non-feather sexable birds. Look for the roosters. And you do this first at six weeks, and it's very easy to tell. Let me show you here. As you pull their tail down, the first thing you're going to notice is there's like a bulb there. They get like this ball, this swollen ball, right down under their tail. And then all you got to do is give that just a little squeeze and see that foam that comes out. Surefire way to tell that is a rooster. No question about it. The hens don't do that. Now, sometimes you might squeeze a hen and get a little bit of foam, but that's because they've been bred by the roosters. So look for that swollen bulb. Give it a squeeze. If that foam comes out almost like toothpaste, those are your roosters. Now, the procedure that I go through is at six weeks for all of our white varieties, I go through and I check them all and look for roosters. Any rooster, I tag with a white band and I separate them into a grow out. So there's less chance of the roosters breeding the hens, which is gonna make it more difficult for me to tell the sex of the hens later. So I check them all and what I do is I put, I put pink bands on the hens, the ones I think are hens, and I leave them in the cage and I take all the roosters with a blue band and I move them into a different cage. Always double check when you're vent sexing. So I always go back at seven weeks, a week later. Some of them are slow to develop, slower to get into that puberty stage. Uh, so I check again at seven weeks. And oftentimes you'll find you might have a dozen birds that you were certain were hens and you go back and look a week later and you see that swollen bulb and you get that foam out of ones that you thought were hens, and then you can move them out too. And by seven weeks, you really should be able to tell. But at eight weeks, when I put them together as breeding pairs, I do it one more time just to verify that the hens are hens, the roosters are roosters, so I get my ratio right, and we put them into the breeding pen at eight weeks. So that's it. To, to vent sex the non-feather sexable varieties, look for the roosters. Again, I really want to encourage everybody, when you're handling the birds, hold them, get under their wings, lay them on their back, and just let them get their energy out. Also, hold them away from your body a little bit because they will a lot of times poop and they will get that all over you. Um, and once they calm down, then go ahead and check their, their vents. Easiest way to do is to look for the roosters for that swollen bulb, squeeze it, look for that white foamy toothpaste stuff to come out. Those are your roosters and that's it. And if you're looking for hatching eggs for big birds that lay big eggs, check out in the description down below, midwestquailfarm.com. We have jumbo browns, jumbo whites, jumbo Egyptians. 
our giant whites we're taking pre-orders for now. They're going to start shipping out at the end of July. We already have a bunch of pre-orders for those. Those are the only four varieties that we send out. Uh, but we take great care in packaging all the shipping eggs, or the hatching eggs, to send them right to you, right to your doorstep. Fresh eggs we ship out every single day. You can order those in the link in the description below. And we also have a variety pack. It's 50 eggs for 40 bucks, and that's at the end of the day when we package up our browns and our whites and our Egyptians. Everything that's left over, we package together. You get a nice mix of all jumbo shipped right to your door. Thanks for tuning in. Like and subscribe to this video because we're going to have more educational Caternix Quill videos coming soon.